Okay, let's demonstrate, let's see physically what it does really imply by using some demonstration. Okay. Single degree of freedom system, right? When I excite with initial displacement, it oscillates cosine omega nt, right? Equilibrium position, I push downward, amount A, and then let it go. The oscillation can be expressed like a minus A cosine omega T. Or if I push up, let it go, then that is A cosine omega T. So depending on initial displacement. Okay. If I give him a initial ve initial initial velocity, that produce a sine omega nt. But depending on the magnitude of initial velocity, that proportional to impulse impulse that is f times delta t. The amplitude of oscillation would be different. Okay, that's what you learn. Okay, suppose I have another mass. Okay. Same mass, same spring. Okay. Then, okay, I'm oscillating with this frequency, which I do not know yet, but this vibrates the two mass in equal phase. In other words, when it go up, the other mass will go up. When I excite with Another frequency, these two mass oscillate in opposite phase, but different magnitude. Yeah, a different magnitude because the force, I mean, restoring force acting on this mass and this mass is not same. In other words, it's not symmetric as we can see over here. Okay, this matrix is a symmetric. And this matrix is a symmetric. What does it mean? <coughs> the contribution from another motion x2 to x1 is minus k2, related with k2. Contribution from x1 to x2 is related with k2, this k2. In other words, we cannot solve this equation as we did for single degree of freedom system because x1 is related with x2, x2 is related to x1. In matrix form, when you have off diagonal term, physically means this system is coupled. If you do not have off-diagonal term, then this two degree of vibratory system is not coupled, meaning that it does not 
affect each other. If this is zero, then the equation is mx m1 x1 double dot plus this one multiply by this, that is k1, and this one multiply by x2, and this is zero, therefore the equation is m1 x1 double dot plus k1 plus k2 x1 is equal to zero, and that equation does not have x2 at all. Therefore, you can, you can solve it as if it is a single degree of freedom system. Okay? Okay? This is very important. So, if we make somehow, if we know somehow the, the, the way to make this coupled mass, spring mass, mass, spring matrix, My mouse is coupled with some, some other thing, so I cannot speak correctly. If I, if I, if I, if I can decouple, if I can make this off diagonal term zero, then you can use this approach. Well, that's the whole idea. Okay, but anyway, we, we know that we can have this omega 1 square and omega 2 square. And then we can claim that the solution then the x can be u1 exponential j omega nt. And this u1 uh, and this n can be 1 or 2. Or <laughs> 2. <laughs> so I can say u exponential j omega 1t can be the solution. Therefore I say the u1 corresponding to the sum beta that is excited by omega 1, u1, and u2 vector exponential j omega 2t, and this can be plus or minus. So, therefore, there are four candidates. In this case, in this case, we have two candidates. Plus minus j omega nt. Right? Okay. Then the rest things we have to do is, what is the u1 vector and the u2 vector? In fact, if we plot this omega 1, omega 1 over here, Say u1 vector exponential j omega 1t over here. That give me the value of u1. And that is the displacement u1, u2 excited or produced by the oscillation when I apply omega 1 over here, as I showed you before. Right? 